uh, a very good morning students today i am going to show you the poles border surfaces sulci uh, gyra of cerebral hemisphere before going to the original specimen just we can see the dummy specimen of uh, cerebral hemisphere so this is a cerebral hemisphere the dummy specimen there are two cerebral hemispheres okay you can see the right and the left one okay so this is the frontal pole okay this is temporal pole okay and behind will be occipital pole so there are three poles frontal pole temporal pole and the occipital pole then most important thing what i going to see in this dummy model is the borders and surfaces later on we will see the sulci gyra in the original specimen so if you see the two cerebral hemisphere separated by a groove here this is called as median longitudinal fissure so median longitudinal fissures uh, separates the two cerebral hemisphere similarly uh, these two are cerebellar hemispheres separated by a transverse fissure so this is a transverse fissure this is median longitudinal fissure so if i take one cerebral hemisphere so we will see here the borders and surfaces pertaining to each surfaces now most importantly you can see this is a flat one okay this flat part on the medial side is called medial surface and this is suprolateral surface and the irregular part this part is inferior surface so we have to remove the cerebellar hemisphere you can see the entirely inferior surface so this is medial surface this is suprolateral surface and this border is called a supromedial border because it is present superiorly as well as towards the medial side so supromedial border separates the suprolateral surface from the medial surface then you have one more border over here okay this border is called as infralateral border present inferiorly and laterally separates the suprolateral surface from the inferior surface however some books also mention uh, the uh, this part of the border is further divided to superciliary border in the front and uh, infralateral border in the behind but however this part separates the suprolateral surface from the inferior surface another border is this one which separates the medial surface from the inferior surface again this medial border inframedial border is divided into parts this is called medial orbital border separating the frontal lobe from the inferior orbital surface of the uh, frontal lobe then you have a medial hippocampal border which will be the here and this is called as medial occipital border so inframedial border can also be further classified as medial orbital hippocampal as well as medial occipital border so there are three surfaces medial surface suprolateral surface inferior surface three poles frontal pole temporal pole and occipital pole so this is about surfaces and uh, borders and poles of the cerebral hemisphere now we will see the original specimen for it now we are going to see the original specimen of the brain and uh, i'm going to show you the the border surfaces and uh, sulci and gyra of uh, all the surfaces of cerebral hemisphere as i told you there are two cerebral hemispheres separated by medial longitudinal fissure so this groove you can see this is called as medial longitudinal fissure and you can appreciate over here when you go deeper aspect you can see a white bundle of fibers connecting these two hemispheres this is corpus callosum and over the corpus callosum you can see the vessels over here these are anterior cerebral vessels so this is corpus callosum and these are anterior cerebral vessels so medial longitudinal fissure separates two cerebral hemisphere and there is a transverse fissure separate two cerebellar hemisphere this is a transverse fissure and i have already told you in the dummy specimen this is a, a frontal pole this is a temporal pole this is a occipital pole now coming to the the important sulci so that with the help of those sulci we can classify the or we can divide the cerebral hemisphere into different lobes that is frontal lobe parietal lobe and occipital and temporal lobe if you carefully observe this sulcus which is separating from supramedial border and it is going here till here this part is called as central sulcus so and here inferiorly you can see there is a lateral sulcus so this is central sulcus which is moving forwards downwards and this is lateral sulcus and here you have a pre occipital notch there is a small dent like area no in front of the uh, occipital pole this is called as pre occipital notch so another important sulcus is parieto occipital sulcus which comes from the 
medial surface. So this part is parieto occipital sulcus. So what you have to do? You have to take these three things: central sulcus, lateral sulcus, and parieto occipital sulcus. From the parieto occipital sulcus, you have to draw a line, vertical line that is called first imaginary line here till here to preoccipital nod. And second will be from the lateral sulcus to the first imaginary line. So when you draw one line over here and one line over here, and with the help of these sulci, we can divide. This entire part of the cerebral hemisphere, just in front of the central sulcus, is called as frontal lobe. So this is frontal lobe, and below the lateral sulcus, that is temporal lobe, and behind the parieto occipital sulcus and the first imaginary line, this is occipital lobe, and between the parieto occipital sulcus and the central sulcus, this area is called as parietal lobe. So a frontal lobe, parietal lobe. temporal lobe and the occipital lobe so these are the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere now i have taken one cerebral hemisphere to show you the borders and surfaces so this is supramedial border we separate medial surface you can see medial surface and you can see suprolateral surface then this part is called as inferolateral border separates the suprolateral surface from the inferior surface the inferior surface is irregular so this is orbital and this is tentorial surface then you have infero medial border and it is further can be divided to medial orbital border and hippocampal border and medial occipital border dividing the medial surface into the inferior surface and on the medial surface as you can see a thick c shaped band of white matter we can see this part is called as corpus callosum so this corpus callosum is made up of commissural fibers connecting two cerebral hemispheres and just below the corpus callosum you can see this septum this is called as septum pellucidum this is septum pellucidum and this part is called lower part of the septum pellucidum this part is having a fornix so this part is fornix corpus callosum septum pellucidum and fornix and you can see here a small hole that is called as interventricular foramen of munro this one and if you open this septum pellucidum you can see there is a cavity over here so this cavity where the forceps is there so this cavity is lateral ventricle so there is a lateral ventricle in each cerebral hemisphere this lateral ventricle opens into the third ventricle this will come here through the interventricular foramen of munro and from through the cerebral aqueduct it communicates with the fourth ventricle so this is fourth ventricle the fourth ventricle is between the brain stem and the cerebellum so this is this is mid brain this is pons and this is medulla this is cerebellum so between this and the cerebellar hemisphere this cavity is fourth ventricle this is cerebral aqueduct here in this area third ventricle will come and this cavity in each cerebral hemisphere is called as uh, lateral ventricle so each cerebral hemisphere having its own lateral ventricle these lateral ventricles will open into the third ventricle through the interventricular foramen of munro as we have seen frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital and temporal lobe one more lobe i mentioned in my class that is hidden lobe that is called as insula to see the insula we have to retract the stem of the lateral sulcus so this part where you are seeing this part is called as insula hidden lobe and over the insula you can see middle cerebral vessels and deep middle cerebral and middle cerebral vessels you can appreciate it this is hidden lobe of the insula to see to see that you have to retract the uh, stem of the lateral sulcus so now coming to the uh, the important uh, sulci and gyri of each lobe that we are going to see now so here as i mentioned here this is a central sulcus okay this is a frontal lobe so we are seeing the sulci and gyri of the frontal lobe so in front of the central sulcus there is a bulging this is called as pre central gyrus just in front of this is pre central gyrus motor area mainly this is pre central sulcus so between the pre central sulcus and the central sulcus you have pre central gyrus apart from that entire frontal lobe is divided by another two important sulci you can see superior frontal sulcus and the inferior frontal sulcus dividing into superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus so you have inferior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus and superior frontal gyrus divided by superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus so these are the sulci gyri of frontal lobe if you go to the temporal lobe you can see this is the stem of the lateral sulcus you can observe here 
the stem is having three parts the horizontal part and the ascending part this is horizontal part of the stem this is ascending part of the stem this is posterior ramus so this horizontal part as it is moving here and in front of that this area is called as pars orbitalis and between the ascending and horizontal part this triangular area is called as pars triangularis and behind that this part is called pars opercularis now this is the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus below this we can see the temporal lobe in the temporal lobe again you have superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus dividing into superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus so these are the sulci gyri of the uh, temporal lobe now coming to the parietal lobe in parietal lobe again you have to start from the central sulcus this is central sulcus go to the parietal lobe behind that this is post central sulcus this post central sulcus and the central sulcus between that there is a gyrus this bulging is there this is called as post central gyrus this is a sensory area area number 3 1 2 then after that you can see intraparietal sulcus this intraparietal sulcus in the parietal lobe divides into superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule and these are the sulci and important gyrus of the parietal lobe coming to the occipital lobe occipital lobe the parieto occipital sulcus comes from the medial surface only part of it is seen on the superlateral surface this is the parieto occipital sulcus behind that will be occipital lobe in that you can observe here lunate sulcus this part is lunate sulcus and little bit which is coming here is calcarine sulcus and there is a transverse occipital sulcus so this is lunate sulcus parieto uh, calcarine sulcus parieto occipital sulcus and uh, transverse occipital sulcus these are the sulci and gyri of the occipital now you can see the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere we will see the sulci and gyri of the medial surface now this is corpus callosum which is got parts here this is rostrum this is genu this is body and this is splenium and this corpus callosum is separated by the callosal sulcus this is called as callosal sulcus which separates the cerebral hemisphere from the corpus callosum so this is callosal sulcus after that there is a bulging here this is called as cingulate gyrus over the corpus callosum and separated by callosal sulcus is cingulate gyrus again after that there is one more sulcus you can see here it starts from here it runs on the medial surface and it has an upturn end so this is called as cingulate sulcus so between the cingulate sulcus and callosal sulcus is the cingulate gyrus and above that this entire part is called as medial frontal gyrus you can observe this broad area is called as medial frontal gyrus now part of the central sulcus as i told you it comes in the uh, medial surface you can see this is the uh, central sulcus which is coming from here yeah this part this part of the central sulcus this area is called as paracentral lobule which is higher center for micturition and defecation and this is the upturn end of the uh, that is cingulate uh, sorry uh, cingulate sulcus then posteriorly if you come more there there is one more sulcus here this is called parieto occipital sulcus and you see parieto occipital sulcus and one more sulcus here that is calcarine sulcus you can observe here this is calcarine sulcus this is parieto occipital sulcus between the calcarine sulcus and parieto occipital this is cuneus between the parieto occipital sulcus and the upturn end of the cingulate sulcus this is called as precuneus this area is called as paracentral lobe and this area is called as a uh, medial frontal gyrus now we are going to see the sulcide gyre of the inferior surface as i told the inferior surface is irregular so i am just uh, retracting the cere uh, cerebellum you can see this is the entire inferior part inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere it has got anterior part called as orbital surface this part is called as tentorial surface now in the orbital surface you can see there is a sulcus here this is called as olfactory sulcus within the olfactory sulcus the olfactory tract and olfactory bulb will be located just medial to that there is a bulging this is called as gyrus rectus this is olfactory sulcus and this is gyrus rectus then you have edge shaped sulcus on the orbital surface this edge shaped sulcus divides into anterior posterior medial lateral orbital gyri i'll repeat edge shaped sulcus divides the orbital surface into anterior posterior medial lateral orbital gyri coming to the tentorial surface here we have two important sulci if you see here medially this is called as collateral sulcus this is occipital temporal sulcus so this collateral sulcus and occipital temporal sulcus divides the tentorial surface into the medial most this part is called as parahippocampal gyrus and anterior part of the parahippocampal gyrus this part is called as uncus 
so this is anchors this is parahypocampal gyrus and just beside that you have collateral sulcus just lateral to the collateral sulcus is medial occipital temporal gyrus then followed by occipital temporal sulcus then you have lateral occipital temporal gyrus it means you have lateral occipital temporal gyrus medial occipital temporal gyrus parahypocampal gyrus separated by collateral sulcus and the occipital temporal sulcus these are the sulci and gyri of inferior surface